I therefore on this day issue public order number three of 2021 as follows. That one with regard to the zoned areas comprising of the counties of Nairobi, Machakos, Kiambu, Kajiado and Nakuru, it is directed that the cessation of movement into and out of the zoned areas be and is hereby lifted. Two, that the hours of curfew in the zoned area are revised to commence at 10 p.m. and end at 4 p.m. with effect from midnight on this day of May 2021 until otherwise directed. Three, that in-person and congregational worship shall resume in strict fidelity to the guidelines issued by the Interfaith Council and the Ministry of Health However, the attending congregation is still capped to one-third of the capacity of the place of worship. And that four, the operations of restaurants and eateries in the zoned areas shall resume in accordance with the guidelines issued jointly by the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Tourism and Wildlife and restaurants are indeed encouraged to utilize outdoor spaces to maximize on physical and social distancing. For the entirety of the Republic of Kenya, it is directed as follows. That one, all our educational institutions in all levels of learning shall reopen in accordance with the calendar issued by the Ministry of Education. And two, that the resumption of sporting activities shall be guided by the regulations to be issued by the Ministry of Health jointly with the Ministry of Sports. Three, that all bars in the territory of the Republic of Kenya are to operate until 7 p.m. And I repeat, 7 p.m. Four, all employ employers and enterprises are encouraged to allow their workers to work from home with the exception being with respect to employees working in critical or essential services that cannot be delivered remotely. And five, that all hospitals are directed to limit the number of visitors for, hospital, for hospitalized patients to one visitor per day, to one visitor per patient per day. And six, that the prohibition against political gatherings is extended until otherwise directed. And seven, that all other containment measures and guidelines that are not expressly set out in this address remain in force and shall be enforced dutifully. Fellow Kenyans, these measures that we institute today and all other interventions that the government has made over the last 14 months are geared towards responding to the unprecedented health threat that has gripped the world. I want to once again reiterate that we have instituted this, these restrictions with no joy. However, as a government with a responsibility and the mandate to protect the lives of Kenyans, we must fully acknowledge that that responsibility that is bestowed upon us calls for action to secure the lives of our people. Over the last year, we have witnessed challenges in other parts of the world where the surge of infections has nearly led to the collapse of some globally acclaimed health systems. We see that happening even as we speak today. In moments like this, we are all called upon to make sacrifices for one another. For the collective good, it is never, and I repeat again, never the intent of government to make life difficult or unbearable for any 
of our citizens. Finally, as we prepare for the reopening of schools, let me emphasize again that our staying power in the fight against this pandemic is our greatest arsenal. I say so because if public responsiveness to health protocols goes up, then the possibility of further de-escalating the containment measures is within reach. Sadly, however, the opposite is also true, that a surge of infections will also necessitate an escalation of containment measures, a possibility that we all dread. So let us step up together for our motherland. We stand on the precip of a very difficult situation, ladies and gentlemen. And it pays nothing to politicize or to sensationalize it. It is your life and the life of 50 million Kenyans that we are talking about here. If we partner and work together, we can maintain both the health and lives of our people as well as our economy. But if we fail to play our role, our individual role, like I said, like it or hate it, my responsibility is to protect life first. We shall and we will do everything that is necessary to prevent what we have seen happen in other countries happen in our country. So ladies and gentlemen, please be honorable, distinguished and patriotic citizens of your land. Tell your fellow Kenyans, teach your fellow Kenyans. Nobody enjoys the situation that we are in. But if, and I repeat again, if we are not able because of our selfishness individually to maintain a situation where we are able to protect both life and economy then like I said we have no choice but to protect that which we are fundamentally bound to protect under the Constitution and that is life so we shall escalate but we can de-escalate if we work together as Kenyans and we are able to continue life as normally as possible while at the same time protecting each other from the kind of dangers that we have seen happen in countries that are much more advanced than we are. So ladies and gentlemen, let us step together for our motherland, step up for our families, step up for our neighbors, and for our beloved nation, Kenya. Fellow Kenyans, I conclude my address to you with a reflection from the third stanza of our national anthem. May the glory of Kenya and the fruits of our labor fill every heart with thanksgiving this Labor Day. There is no doubt. Without labor, as I said before, there is no prosperity. Labor remains the game changer of all progress and we must therefore celebrate our workers as creators and makers of things during COVID but also during good times. I wish you all a happy Labor Day, one full of thanksgiving for the fruits of your labor to the nation this year. Happy, La happy Labor Day, stay safe, stay home where possible, God bless you all, and may God bless Kenya. Asante Nisana.